Hello and how are you? Ikamela Mutanda Makakula and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much, baby. And if you're passing by, stop. This is your home now. Subscribe. Today, I'm going to tell you guys a story. I know you didn't ask for a story, but you're going to get it because this is my channel. And I'm going to tell you a story. So, where do I begin? It was the year 2010. I was in Limpopo, particularly in Turflop. I think it was Unit F in a shack. With a bunch of people, it's called a congregation. Yeah. So I was listening to a public talk, which was given by someone I held in high regard. So as he was talking, he presented the talk in Sibidi. As he was talking, he said, if you are not baptized, you are not part of Jehovah's family. I said, Whoa, wait a minute, what do you mean? He said, if you're coming to meetings, going to field service, but you're not baptized, you are not part of Jehovah's family. You have to get baptized to be part of Jehovah's family. I was shocked, flabbergasted. What you mean I'm not part of Jehovah's family? I'm accompanying you all. No, no, no. I need to be a part of Jehovah's family. What I'm talking about is my story as a Jehovah's Witness. So, I was a Jehovah's Witness for 10 years of my life. I didn't grow up as one, but uh, in my late teen years, I became one. And at home, uh, I'm originally from Bumalang. Uh, so at the congregation there, a lot of people were getting disfellowshipped. Disfellowship is a witness jargon, which basically means that you're expelled and then you're shunned. So even though I didn't fully understand the nitty-gritties of being disfellowshipped i knew it's not something that i want for myself so i was like i'll just attend their meetings and you know read their stuff and go to um field service but i won't get baptized because people make mistakes really if i make a mistake now people won't talk to me you know so when i heard that talk i now it was bigger than people not talking to you. Now it was, you're not part of Jehovah's family. What the hell? I need to be a part of this family, right? Okay, then I had already read stuff. I think I understood it. <laughs> Looking back, I didn't understand it. Anyway, so I went to the elders and I was like, I want to get baptized, right? Did they not play hide and seek with me? They dribbled me. Like, in, su in such a condescending way. Like, you know, you still need to read more. You still need to what, what more, right? But uh, a former friend of mine who was a ministerial servant at the time told me that these elders think uh, my then boyfriend is trying to get married to me so for him to get married to me i have to get baptized i was like isn't that some bullshit what do you mean i'm doing my first year why on earth would you think i want to get married anyway um the next year february i got baptized hence i was a witness for 10 years um i think those elders ducking and diving me and playing hide and seek with my baptism should have been a red flag but it wasn't in fact because they they made getting baptized so elusive i wanted it more right so i got baptized and I really, really tried to make it work. I don't want to lie to you. I really tried to make it work. Um, some years I wasn't really active, wasn't really zealous, 
uh, some years I'd go to um, the meetings without preparing. I'd answer at the top of my head. Um, wouldn't go to field service. Would lie about the hours. And then the last five years, because I remember in 2016, there was a meeting workbook and it said, you can pioneer too. Now, I watched the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, and I've always been fascinated with the idea of pursuing happiness and finding happiness. One of my favorite songs is Kid Cudi's uh, song in The Pursuit of Happiness. Brah, if you know that song, and if you love that song, you've got good taste in music. So, um, that's what I did, you know. I, I really, really pursued happiness in the Jehovah's Witness religion. Um, I, I used to hear pioneers saying that they're in a spiritual paradise and they live a simple life and they're happy. And I thought maybe if I pioneer, I'll also be happy, right? <sighs> I wasn't. Honestly, 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 like truths of truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, I wasn't happy because here's the thing about being a witness. They place a target, you reach it, and then the definition changes. They say, do this, you're going to be happy. And then you do it and then now happiness doesn't mean to always be joyful but it means to be content because you know that you're pleasing jehovah yeah but i want to be happy i want to feel joyful so now you can't be clocking in 70 hours at the time they were clocking in 70 hours i recently saw that it's no longer 70 hours i think regular pioneers it's now 50 hours so I'm working a full-time job. When I get back from work, I have to go and preach. I will not lie to you. I enjoyed teaching people the Bible. I thoroughly enjoyed that because I felt that we had really meaningful conversations. And I, I, I don't know, man. I felt like my work had a purpose, like I was doing something meaningful in people's lives. And I enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm a teacher by profession. So I do enjoy to teach. And I would find people who were really interested and we'd have uh, very nice conversations, very nice debates. It was cool, you know. What wasn't cool and what I didn't particularly enjoy were the brothers and the sisters. Eh, no, I didn't enjoy them particularly in the last congregation well in the congregation that i got disfellowshipped at they were just okay i wasn't their cup of tea <laughs> i wasn't they couldn't digest me they wouldn't digest me i was misunderstood and i just think that they were not my people and i wasn't their person and that's okay so I remember particularly in the year 2015 this brother came eh, just a normal Je Jehovah's Witness brother he's like you know next day I'm going to get married and you know and I invite you I'm like oh cool because uh, the demographic of um a congregation is very weird in the Jehovah's Witness religion. You may find that the congregation is made up of all old people and all toddlers. And there's only one young adult. So you have no friend. And then you have to have friends who are way older than you have very um, different problems or challenges or life experiences from you because you don't have any peers in there right so now when this brother said to me i'm gonna get married i was like oh finally 
someone my size is coming and we're probably gonna be great friends and lack of stuff oh <laughs> that was far from it i think uh his wife hated me from just hearing about me I, she didn't even need to see me she just didn't like me she didn't like me she wouldn't like me she couldn't like me yeah i you know here's the thing in religion we experience so much abuse and we are gaslighted so many times but we don't have the vocabulary to say this is gaslighting this is manipulation this is abuse this is emotional and psychological abuse this is spiritual abuse because that is what was happening right um i think she and her husband convinced each other that i was interested in the husband which i promise you i promise you there is not a cell in my body that has ever been interested in that man no he was boring as fuck he was so boring there's no way there's no way but i mean he's my brother in the faith so you know we have to get along right and he doesn't have to entertain me because he's not mine right so you know when she came she came with an attitude uh she would see me greet the brother and like you know we, obviously i knew him before i knew her so you know she would anytime she saw us together she would i don't know how in what speed but she would leap and she's there now you know she also wants to hear what we're talking about right i mean for the first few times you don't notice it but as time goes on you do notice it that why okare this person doesn't trust me around her husband who i am not interested in right and then it went on to uh other sisters older sisters much older sisters i mean people who are old enough to be my grandmother not greeting me like if they do greet me with a very sour attitude because i was a homewreck <laughs> um this placed so much anxiety on me and paranoia because i was like guys i don't want this guy i don't want him i'm not interested in him and i think he enjoyed it i think he had a ball with it because what they're fighting for me oh my god i'm the prize you get me so um uh, the gaslighting came as i was wrong i don't even know how i was wrong but anyway it was just one of the things that really made me not enjoy being a witness and having to go to the kingdom hall two times a week you understand so um when did it okay before when it went south or when i kind of checked out mentally i was a pioneer for five years and honestly i was clocking the hours with the pioneering i don't want to lie to you i took it very seriously and i had studies progressive studies um i was clocking in the hours i, I was just winning in it you understand but when did the pandemic start 2019 <laughs> before the pandemic started i just always felt a lot of anxiety because of having to reach 70 hours Do you understand having to reach 70 hours when you work a full-time job is not the easiest thing in the world because you basically have no social life none whatsoever and you're doing this because you've been told that you're in full-time service for jehovah god not for man right so you're giving it your all but there's so much anxiety that comes with it like 
I think I was so good at concealing my anxiety. Many people didn't know that I had anxiety, but it was a lot. Like I'd have back pain, neck pain. It it was just really, really stressful for me. So when the pandemic started, I think I had sort of checked out. And one of the things that made me check out was this. As a witness, you're not allowed to disagree with the doctrines. You understand? If something doesn't make sense to you, you have to pray for Jehovah to help you to understand it. So here's one of the things that really didn't make sense to me. If you look up at the sky, you'll see that the sky is blue. If I say to you that the sky is purple, when you clearly see that it's blue, you're going to have a sort of a mind fact like, what do you mean the sky is purple? I can clearly see that it's blue. So here's something that didn't make sense to me. Abraham, God's friend, lied. He lied. Abraham said to Pharaoh, uh, Sarah is not my wife. Well, he didn't say he's not my wife, but he said, um, okay, I'm, I'm starting the story wrong. Let me start the story correctly. So, there was a famine. Abraham and Sarah had to go to Egypt. When they arrived at Egypt, Pharaoh, who was the king, saw Sarah, who was a very beautiful woman, and obviously, wanted to take her as his wife now sarah was married to abraham but they were also related in that um i think sarah was abraham's father's kid or mother father or mother but they shared a parent one parent right so when pharaoh asked what is this woman to you Abraham said, she's my sister, instead of saying, she's my wife, right? That is omitting to tell a very important fact. Now, why did Abraham uh, do this? He said to himself that because Sarah is such a beautiful woman, if the Egyptian king uh, found out that Sarah was his wife, then surely he would kill him, right? Now, uh, Pharaoh took Sarah and, you know, I think he, she was living in his quarters. I don't know what they were doing, but, you know, he took her. And then he was now showering Abraham with gifts because he thought that he was impressing Sarah's brother right he did that because he was misled by this guy abraham now the jehovah's witnesses said that abraham didn't lie because sarah was in fact abraham's sister i said hold on a minute the only reason that pharaoh asked their relationship is because he wanted to take her as a wife so if you have to disclose your incomes, um, your stream of incomes to SARS, the South African Revenue Services, you can't omit stuff and say that they are not privy to that information because that's what Jehovah's Witnesses were saying, that um, a Pharaoh wasn't privy to that uh, information. So you can tell half-truths, which doesn't make it a lie. But that's a lie. It's an, if you lead me to the wrong conclusion, you've lied. And that is where I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Like, I couldn't get it. I, I remember a former friend told me that, you know, this elder explained it this way. I get the elder explained it. But it's the same as I look up and I see that the sky is blue and you say that the sky is purple. Abraham lied by omitting important details which led Pharaoh to an incorrect conclusion, right? Right there, I was like, mm, 
and another thing was the new light jehovah's witnesses flip-flop around their teachings um we no longer believe in this we now believe in that but jehovah's witnesses also claim to be god's one true religion that he has personally chosen and he shows they are the one who teach the truth right so if god doesn't lie why does he keep showing them the wrong light why does he do that there was um a watchtower from 2013 a bunch of uh, doctrines were changed it was now new light i i just don't believe that you know it's either god is lying or god doesn't know the jehovah's witnesses from above soap and they're just making things up as they go along so when the pandemic had started and we were deep deep in lockdown um we weren't going to feel service anymore this brother gave i think it's a service talk he gave this talk and he made an example of a lady in her 50s or 60s yeah so he said that this lady sister right was not married didn't have children and uh, was a faithful pioneer but her family didn't talk to her because she was a witness but she was happy because she was pleasing jehovah I think that talk during um, the, the, the hard lockdown, like level five lockdown, wasn't the best thing to do because I listened to it and I was like, what the, that could be me. Because I, w- I was childless, not married, you know, I was just like, eh, what happens to me in my old age? if i don't have kids you know and i'm already in a congregation where i know there's no love you don't feel it you don't see it it's not there you know there's a lot of gossip and backbiting and uh judging and it just it's a mess you know and if if ever you were to get old and you didn't have your own family like your own village of people who genuinely love you who don't have to tolerate you because you're in the same religion you're in trouble so i was like oh no 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 so here's the thing about uh being a witness if you're a witness you have to get married to a, a witness as well uh what do they say you shouldn't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers right but the thing is it's not that easy like if the only thing that brings us together is the doctrines apart from that uh, if we weren't in this religion we'd have nothing to talk about so you can't possibly think that everyone's gonna find someone they connect with there so finding a marriage mate may not be the easiest thing or oh, well rather isn't the easiest thing and not everyone wants to get married right like not everyone aspires to get married like you know so um it's very it's not as it's not practical it's not practical at all and as a witness you can't say that so i got disfellowshipped because i was like deuces (laughs) i i now want a child you know I decided that I want a child and I met someone we connected and I was like but I want a child and he was like cool I want a child too and we made that child and then I got disfellowshipped um when I got disfellowshipped I don't want to lie to you I thought I would go back because I believed that this was the truth right but five months into my being disfellowshipped I realized something 
I this this load of anxiety was gone like I didn't have any inclining of anxiety none whatsoever I was just I was just me cruising along you know nothing bothered me I didn't have to prepare for a wash tower I didn't I didn't have to call someone for a study I, I didn't have to report anything I, I I felt like for the first time in a long time I could just breathe the weight of being right the weight of being a witness was gone and man it was it was mind blowing right then i went on to youtube yeah when went on to youtube i found this youtuber called lloyd evans lloyd evans lives in croatia i live in limbobo but when he spoke about his JW experience, I related it to it so much. I've never met that man in my life, but I was like, how does he know, you know? And then he started debunking uh, the religion and I was shocked. I was truly, truly shocked to find out that this is a cult and the predictions are false the teachings are false like it's so you know the most sinister and cunning thing that you can do is accuse everyone of doing something and then go and do it 10 times worse than them because now no one is expecting you to do it that is exactly what the jehovah's witness religion does it's not a religion it is actually a real estate a multi-billion dollar real estate company fronting as a religion and it's so bad because the relig the cult wants to micromanage every aspect of its members lives they want to know who you're sleeping with how many times you slept with them they want to know if you're married did you sign if you um if you go to hospital, what type of treatment are you getting? You shouldn't get a blood trans transfusion. And these are people who didn't study medicine yet. They are commenting on medical issues. I think what really, really crushed me is how they hide uh, child sexual abuse. They will hide a pedophile. They will hide a rapist. And... The victims are just supposed to forgive and hope that Jehovah will do something about it. That's where the gaslighting comes in. And, you know, when I, when I, I, I was listening to these things, I kept on hoping that it would be wrong. But then I watched the Royal Commission in Australia, that court case, and I was shocked, got smacked that Jeffrey Jackson would deny that he is uh, what you call the faithful and discreet slave that Garrett Loesch would say he is not a member or an employee of the watchtower the employee the watchtower has no control over him he has no control over it yet he's a sitting governing body member all of this you know when you hear something about something that you hold in like when you hear something bad about something that you hold in high regard you keep hoping that it's a lie and the truth is going to come out but with all the xjw witnesses that i've heard it's it's a cult and i am never going back there never and i think like there's just so many atrocities that they do the disfellowshipping and shunning um it broke it breaks my heart that you know there are people who have been shunned and they literally took their lives because they couldn't handle it because it's so emotionally and psychologically abusive that firstly you would isolate a person 
then when they change their minds or they make a mistake now you take the entire social network and you say they shouldn't talk to them that's the most cruel thing that you a person but this is what the religion does and you know i don't want to um get cult members out of the cult it's not what i want to do i think uh no one can think for you if you have doubts if you have questions i think it's your responsibility to not um shy away from your doubts it's your responsibility to look into it and to hear all sides of the story if the truth is the truth then what i say won't change the truth but if the truth is a lie then you wouldn't want to listen to what i have to say because i can easily deconstruct that lie um now i i understand why people used to close their doors and be like ah these people are so annoying i understand and to those whom i used to preach to i honestly thought this was a loving act i thought that um this is how you show that you love your neighbor as you love yourself by helping them to cultivate a relationship with their creator i had no idea that this was a cult i had no idea i had no idea that the teachings were false and were subject to which governing body member is alive you know if if he dies you know they'll be like oh good riddance to bad rubbish and then they change it i would humbly like to apologize to all of you my intentions were good but it was all a lie all of it and you know you can throw away all those publications throw them away it's you yay yeah good trick the purpose of this video is not to recruit witnesses to leave their cult or truth or whatever they call it as a witness i had answers to everything what happens to us when we die we're going to live in a paradise we're going to get along with the animals we're going to build houses and have vineyards now all i have is questions i have questions as to why is an almighty god infuriated by two consenting adults when they engage in sexual relations but is not equally as infuriated when an adult takes advantage of a vulnerable child yeah what i'm sure of right now is that i'm alive and i need to live my life the best way possible i hope this video was helpful and you like and you subscribe